had sex without being physically together. Technology is changing the way we communicate and the way we are intimate. Let me give you an example. When I, when I was young and I went with my parents on holiday camping, I met this beautiful girl, Anna. And when I got home, I wrote her several letters. By the way, who wrote a letter after coming home from a holiday in the last 12 months? Nobody, right? Also, we had those old rotary phones. And after a few years, we had answering machines to contact each other. Then, mobile phones became the main way of contacting each other, first by calling and then texting. I still remember when I got my first cell phone. I was the first in my class during university. And now everybody is using WeChat, WhatsApp, Facebook to communicate. Also, how we meet people is changing. I used to walk up to a girl if I liked her and speak to her, hey, how you doing? <laughs> With the risk, of course, of being rejected. Lucky me, that never happened. <laughs> Now many people meet each other online through online dating sites and dating apps. In 2014, Match.com, one of the leading internet dating websites, reported that 20% of the new relationships started online. Another report says that 25% of the people between 18 and 27 are using online dating apps. How many people are you have used Tinder? How many people has a date through Tinder? <laughs> this whole hype around Tinder and dating apps lead me to try it myself. I told my girlfriend, Jorien, I needed to test this new thing called Tinder. It was necessary for me to try it for research. So, <laughs> so I created a profile on Tinder and gave it a try. I can tell you, I was really, really bad in it. What do you have to say to a person you have you never met? What do you have to write to somebody who you cannot see? The whole experience was really strange for me. At that moment, I realized I'm a digital immigrant instead of a digital citizen. This younger generation, let's say the digital citizens, they are way more comfortable with this type of communication. They have never lived in a world without internet or cell phones. I see young kids sitting next to each other, not speaking, only texting. Recently, I read an article about young kids being teached in how to speak in person. This new way of communication makes the world even bigger because we can have relationships with people all over the world from Amsterdam to New York, but at the same time, it makes the world smaller because we can reach out to anyone anywhere in the world. What also has changed is the way we are intimate with our lovers. People have phone sex, sending nude pictures to, it, to each other. Sexting is a hot topic, right? You don't need to be physically together to be intimate. What is intimacy? This is, can be different for everybody. For some, it's holding hands with their loved ones, their way of being intimate. For others, they don't even consider sex as being intimate. What we all have in common is the need for human connection. Research has shown that we need the sensation of touch to establish that human connection. Even the briefest touch can cause an emotional response, so touching each other is important to build and maintain relationships. Another research shows that physical affection is highly correlated with the happiness of a relationship. Nowadays, there are people who are offering themselves for cuddle buddies, for money. We all have changing and busy lives because of our modern technology. It can be hard to find time to be physically close enough for intimacy. I believe we must create a new space for intimacy in this technological world, since technology has become important in every other aspect of our lives. So 
how can we use technology to facilitate our most intimate moments? My fascination of all this started by seeing the video Demolition Man, where Sandra Bullock and Sylvester Stallone have virtual sex. They sit across each other and have those weird virtual helmets on. That scene sparked an idea. What kind of technology can we invent so you can feel your partner without being physically together? The goal of this project was to facilitate the needs of human nature, to give people the tools so they can be intimate from anywhere in the world. We started for, for couples with long-distance relationships or those who travel a lot for work, like myself, or girls and guys in the military, or disabled people. What kind of devices do you need to have this sexual experience without the other person actually being in the same room? After research, the outcome was people want devices they can connect anytime, anywhere. But even more important, the desire to interact in real time without any delay. So it will go much further than only seeing each other online. With these ideas in mind, we created a video chat platform and two touch-sensitive devices, a male masturbator and a touch-sensitive vibrator that measures the movement online. These devices connect wireless and communicate directly. So how does this all work? Both partners connect their device to the video chat platform and join a private room. Each stroke of the vibrator will be translated to the male masturbator and he will feel the up and down movement. Also, he can give pleasure to her by sliding his finger over the touchpad on the outside. He can control the speed and vibration of her device. In practice, it means that partners can video chat with each other and share the sensation of touch, which creates a feeling of intimacy. Any device can connect to any other device. So, male to female, female to female, male to male, or even one to many. We wanted to make any option possible. <laughs> We wanted to make any option possible because we know there are a lot of variations in how people like to express themselves sexually. The more we got into the sex tech industry, the more we saw there was a huge demand to connect our devices with all kinds of adult content, such as adult videos, webcam, or virtual reality. We developed a way to connect our devices to this kind of content, to add the missing element of touch. So now you can feel what is happening, just like you are there. So when you watch adult videos, you will feel exactly what you see. Or when you connect to a webcam model, she can, she can take control of your pleasure with one of our devices. Also, we added virtual reality. The concept has been around since the 90s. Only recently, the technology has become advanced enough and cheap enough to be available for the average consumer. Now you can buy a virtual headset for about 40 bucks. You put in your, your smartphone and have an incredibly realistic experience. You can take a, a walk through New York or through the jungle or watch porn. Well, not only watch it, also feel it. Because virtual reality makes the video so real, and in combination with your headphone, it is like you are there. Your brain wants to start touch stuff. Our devices add that element. It will, be, it will become literally a mindfuck. <laughs> are we there yet? I think we made a huge step forward giving people the tools they need to be intimate which, in a world which is changing fast. However, I believe th that the possibilities are endless and we have just scratched the surface of what is possible. What will the future bring us? 
I believe in a short period of time, we will get used to this third dimension of online intimacy. Next to hear each other and see each other, we can feel each other. People were hesitant at first. I know, I was. But now it has changed the way we interact with our partners. Now you can add the sensation of touch, although we still need to feel the human connection. I often get the question, if we don't need to see each other anymore because of our devices, does it replace real intercourse? No, I don't think so. Nothing is better than real intercourse. The only thing we are doing is adding something for the people who cannot be together. Thank you.